Hello and welcome to another episode of That Sports Guy's podcast. I am Craig Forrestal. I am That Sports Guy. Go ahead and find me on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy where you find all of my latest football takes. Also, NFLDraftDiamonds.com is proud to feature the That Sports Guy podcast on its website. Stop by NFLDraftDiamonds.com, your official draft coverage king. Hello and welcome to another player profile interview. I am Craig Forstall. You know me from Twitter as at that underscore sports underscore guy. And today we have with me UMass offensive tackle, Larnell Coleman. Larnell, how's it going on your end? I'm great, Craig. How you doing? I'm not too bad. Just trying to get through the day. You know how Sundays go. Sometimes you get that feeling about the week coming up and you're not looking forward to it. But I'm excited for what we got planned today because Larnell, you are a interesting guy, and I got to start off with where it all started, right? Mal- Malden, Massachusetts. What's life like growing up in Massachusetts? Um, it's honestly it's not too it's not too bad. I know a lot of people from uh, different parts of the country. Uh, they actually don't even know what Massachusetts is, surprisingly. But um, it's it's a it's a nice place. Uh, I grew up uh, pretty much around the city, so it was uh, always something to do. Um, what is it? It was. It was – honestly, it's just like it's a great place to grow up because I was always surrounded by my friends and family, and it was very tight-knit community where I was at. So what is it? We all just, you know, was able to hang out all the time and, you know, share, like, so many experiences growing up. And now some of those experiences continued when you were at St. Clement High School, and you dominated both on the football field and basketball court. But – you were a very accomplished basketball player, winning a state championship as a sophomore, and then you were recognized as an all-star multiple times as well. Was there a time where you thought basketball was going to be your sport in college? Honestly, I did. I honestly did. Um, I also, what is it, during that time, I preferred basketball too. Uh, it was just some about it. It was just like, it was just, I seen it as just more fun and whatnot. Um, but football was my calling. I'm not too mad about it, though. What is it? Uh, I feel like, especially now, I definitely would make – I'm definitely the best uh, football player I can be now. And that if I went the basketball route, I don't know if I would be having as much success as I am now. So, uh, basketball definitely – it was 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 my first love. But, you know, I had to part with it (laughs) when college came around. And that's what I want to go to next when college came around. I read an article on ESPN Boston recalling your football recruiting experience, and it seems like you were a late bloomer and UMass came in kind of late. Just what was your relationship like with UMass throughout the recruiting experience? And if you could just take us through what that was like for you before committing. Yeah, definitely. Um, So what is it? As you said, I was a late bloomer. Um, Didn't uh, have too many schools looking at me at first because um, when my school was around, it's now closed, unfortunately, but uh, we was a small school in the state. Uh, my, gradu- my graduating class was like 30 people. Um, but what is it? UMass, once the recruiting prog- process began for me, uh, they was pretty much there throughout the whole entire time. Uh, they treated me like family. Um, a lot of the other schools that were looking at me, you know, kind of was just like a high and buy type thing. Um, which was it was it was cool which was cool. Um but UMass really just kinda stuck with me throughout that whole process and really made it feel um like they had a spot for me and that they would make it home for me and whatnot. So uh they've really been there since day one. So I'm quite happy with, you know, coming here and being a part of uh the school. And when you got to UMass initially, you were an undersized offensive lineman in terms of weight. I saw that you were somewhere around 250 when you got to campus, but you've put on north of 50 pounds since you've arrived. Just what has that body transformation been like for you? And was it difficult for you to adjust to adding weight like that? Um, Honestly, no. But actually, like when I came into UMass, I was actually 215 pounds. Um, so I actually put on uh, the, uh, almost, yeah, 100 pounds, actually, because I'm up to 315 now, which I'm pretty comfortable at um but that transition um 
It honestly wasn't too hard for me. Uh, I actually had the like the natural size and the frame to hold the weight pretty well, so that transition wasn't too uh, hard. The only thing I really gave up was some speed, but what is it? The bonus with that is I got a lot of strength now due to the weight that I carry. And at UMass, you've started both at right tackle and left tackle. Do you have one side where you are more comfortable? Um. Honestly, I don't. I can I can play both uh, positions. Um, what is it? As of right now, I'm the left tackle. But you know, any, anytime, even mid game, I can switch over to right tackle anytime. Uh, I just because I actually started out playing right tackle. Um, so going back there wouldn't be too much of a transition for me and whatnot. Um, there's not too many differences, but uh, you know, it wouldn't be too much of a problem if I had to. And then I want to stick there, maybe for some of our listeners that aren't too familiar with offensive tackle play. What is, I guess, the main difference between the right side and the left side? Um, I think the main difference, uh, at least for me, is uh, having switching your jam hands. Um, usually I like my left hand is a lot stronger than my right one. So uh, being on that left side definitely gives me more of an advantage. But what is it? Um, that would probably be the only real thing for me. It's really – it's a very slight difference and it all has to come due to preference. Um, but that's probably the most minuscule detail, but that's probably the only difference I see. And we, we've, talked about, we've talked about your growth since you've arrived on campus physically, but then also on the field you've made tremendous strides. And one common word that I've seen with you – on different scouting reports is upside. It seems like the upside with you hasn't even really been touched. How much more room is there for you to grow as an offensive tackle? Uh, there's a tremendous amount of room because um, in high school, I only played maybe one year at tackle. Um, and I really didn't, I wasn't even taught really technique and whatnot. So once I got to college, when everything kind of started for me and, what is it? I still have so much room to grow just uh, from a knowledge aspect and, you know, strength aspect and, you know, just movement aspect, like just everything. And I know, especially having my athletic background with basketball and everything, it's going to help me even more in the future. So sky's the limit uh, with me. And then throughout your time at UMass, what type of leader have you grown into, if not for the offensive line unit, the team overall? Um, what is it? I think, especially with the offensive line, what is it? I be, I'm not a very vocal leader. Um, I'm more so the type of guy to lead by example. Um, trying to, to uh, transition to more of that vocal types, you know, so I can start influencing as many people I can on the team, especially the new incoming freshmen and whatnot. But um, I think I'm a more so just lead by example type of person, and you know, uh, my work shows. Now, I want to ask you something because a lot of people, when they first see you on film, they say that your length sticks out immediately when they see you on film. But I wanted to ask you, aside from all the physical attributes, what do you think is the best part of your game? Um, hmm. I'd have to say uh, the best part of my game is that I – don't ever give up. I'm very competitive. And when, say, if I were to lose a rep and whatnot, I get, I, I'm so tough on myself where it's like I won't allow myself to get beat again. You know, like I try to make sure I'm driving, I'm pushing myself as hard as I possibly can to make sure that I'm the best on the field at all the time. So definitely my competitive aspect and I uh, just wanted to win and whatnot. And now, as you prepare for the upcoming season, what has your training been like? Have you focused on one area more so than another aspect of your game, really trying to fine-tune that part? Um, yeah, what is it? Uh, for me, honestly, it's been flexibility. Um, but just making sure that um, I can become as flexible as possible so I can, you know, sit lower in my stance so that I can do it from a, a, you know, a lower position so I can sink my weight into the ground so I have a better center of gravity. Um so it's really just been flexibility, and I know that will help tremendously in other areas of my game. And, Lauren, 
I want to thank you for being such a good sport and handling all the questions about the on-field stuff because now we're going to go to the real tough stuff. I'm going to beat you up a little bit. So here's the first one. What is that song you're embarrassed to admit you like? Shoot. This is this is a hard question. Um, hmm. I think I'm gonna have to go. Now I don't say old school, but uh, you know, back in the day, fireworks by uh, what is it, Katy Perry? I do like that song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's the dream car for you? The dream car. Um, I always been a uh, Nissan GTR fan. Like I, the way those cars look are just amazing. And as soon as I can, buy, when I can afford it. I definitely gonna have to spend some money on it. And now you're gonna do anything to it? You're gonna customize it a little bit for yourself? Oh, definitely, because you know them, those things are small, so you know I gotta make sure I customize it so I can fit myself. In. <laughs> and now, Larnell, what's been the most memorable or interesting class you've taken in college? Um, hmm, that's a hard one. Um, I think the most memorable memorable class I've taken is uh, it was a sociology class I took. Um, and I say that because it really taught me about, you know, the world and how uh, other people within our world function and whatnot and just being be- able to better understand where uh, people are coming from, whether it's, you know, the different type of backgrounds they have, or, you know, even coming from different countries and whatnot. So, like, that's probably been, sociology uh, has been, like, uh, it's really stuck with me. And now, what's the best restaurant close to campus? Close to campus. Uh, there's a lot of debate uh, around here <laughs> what's the best one. But um, for me personally, uh, I like Bruno's. That's a big spot for me. Uh, they got the best calzones, I think. So I'm going to go with Bruno. And now, what do you, what do you put in your calzone? Uh, I'm, uh, what is it? I like. The barbecue chicken calzones, those, those are my uh, top ones right there. Oh, okay. So you, you go a little bit off the map with it. I like it. A little bit. <laughs> and we're going to finish up with this final question. If you won a million dollars, but you could only donate it to one charity or one cause, what would it be? Um, honestly, I would donate it to cleaning up the oceans. Um, I think just uh, from taking a couple uh, college course classes and seeing how much, you know, junk and damage we throw into the oceans and how it's going to affect us, you know, later on, I think uh, that's probably where I donate my money first. And then before we sign off, what's the one thing our listeners need to be on the lookout for with the UMass program this upcoming season? They need to uh, – I'll say watch that old line play. We're going we gonna to come out, show out, and we're really going uh, to surprise a lot of people. So, you know, just look out for the old line. You heard it here first. The UMass O-line is going to be one of the strengths of the team this upcoming season. For Larnell Coleman, I'm Craig Forrestal. Until next time, stay safe and be easy. Hey everybody, Craig Forstall. Thanks for tuning in and listening to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy to catch all the latest updates and podcast episodes. Until next time, stay safe and be easy.